uh, is uh, use three part with energetics. Um, we look at, like the lawyers look at the total energy input to the system, but we don't have uh, actually observation and whatever to really give a very good uh, description of how much energy input there's in. I also talk about the system uh, news attempt response to this energy input, but how this uh, energy being transmitted to low latitude, how this response is still uh, very much uh, open question. And the dynamics, I show you the neutral wind change circulations during the storm and after the, this a little bit after the storm. But how does compare to observation? What's the exact maximum driving this thing? Um, still need a lot of work to do. And uh, clearly, that's yeah, dynamics because the neutral wind drive the uh, disturbance dynamic during the storm. How this, uh, and we also have a penetrating electric field. How does two electric field interplay and determine the global electric field? Then uh, feed back to the atmosphere, thermosphere dynamics is still. Um, very much a challenge work. So I believe that all those uh, challenges were ever being well recognized by the uh, upper atmosphere research community. Consequently, NASA recently uh, set up a Living with the uh, focus topic uh, team to dedicate in the next four years to study this neutral dynamics and its influence on the carbon magnetosphere atmosphere system. So we have about five teams from universities at UCA or UNCA. Uh, we hope to work together for the next four years to really get at the bottom and get some, some fundamental physics uh, of the upper atom dynamics out to get some uh, progress in this front. So I'm, uh, this is probably my immediate future work. And uh, also I'm very interested in the model development, which uh, resonates the high resolution modeling uh, with, uh, so we can uh, cover the study the coupling uh, between different scales, large scale effects, and those small scales, and the small scale feedback to large scale, all those things. So this is just an example of storm run. Use the preliminary results, use the high risk TIEGCM. All those structures are like the ton of ionization, uh, the blobs, uh, the patches in the, inside the polar cap, and the boundary blob, all those things cannot be resolved adequately by the cost model, TIEG cell, but show up very nicely in the high res. So we want to further develop this kind of a high res capability and to see this thing. Another thing is uh, very interesting, so if you notice this, this is some of our reason, which we say the mid large trough can be resolved with this high res. And then we, if we cover the manuscript model in the manuscript, we probably can resolve for the first time the steps formation and its dynamic variation. So we're very much looking forward to that. And that's part of my third future work, which uh, long term, I believe uh, I can do it uh, myself, but the group work from the aim section or whatever, which is uh, cover the low atmosphere, 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 uh, then study response to varying solar input. So this uh, clearly, where I talked about the energy momentum coupling between the manusphere and atmosphere driven by the manusphere. So they will, I haven't touched about the mass coupling which is the outflow of the things which is a very hot topic in, this, uh, uh, in the space weather world. And uh, specifically, I would like to, I think it's uh, very uh, important to extend the summit uh, to including time GCF and a long-term welcome so that we can uh, have a better distribution of uh, uh, low atmosphere influence of the upper atmosphere, like gravity waves, uh, uh, resolved gravity waves, study tides, better between tides and the planet waves, which uh, I do not have time to cover this part. And also, uh, specifically for my interest in uh, cover the main, uh, uh, very good physics uh, plasma stream model and in the main sphere model, which we can uh, resolve some uh, very, uh, like steps I've talked about. And also, we study the feedback effect of the, uh, the neutral dynamics to the MIT system. And uh, clearly, uh, as the developer, we have more data of cosmic or other global observation from space and from ground GPS, TC, those things. We have more global data for the atmosphere. So, data assimilation 
can be put this data together, coupled with physics based model, can be get a much better description of the now chaos and uh, or better forecast for the atmosphere, so especially when not two hour forecast. Um, so that's uh, also, I believe, is uh, would be very interesting, very important thing to do. Uh, specifically, this is uh, for the space weather application. That is, uh, as I show you, the evolution of storm water. We we'll use uh, this uh, global discrete or reanalysis re field of our atmosphere to study the evolution of a global atmosphere during storms and get some uh, knowledge of how the the neutral dimensions driving the storm variation new atmosphere may be very can be very helpful. With that, I conclude my talk and uh, take your questions. Yeah. In the model. Uh, you know, first thing, uh, first question regarding how far we should go, it depends on the physics that you want to study. For normally you solve the structure of water I see, I, my idea uh, goal to suit is a half degree in both longitude and the latitude, and a little bit more. Uh, in the, what I saw is a, a quarter of scale height, we want to reduce it by increase by another half with a when eighth of the scale height would be from, however, for other things like uh, bubble simulation, you, you want more final resolution, which maybe we can have to use some less grid or embedded yeah. capability to do that. Uh, as far that's a long term goal, I believe that's a, what I really want to have. But uh, I believe Wacom has a kind of variable grid, maybe help for in that regard, we can do yeah. that. Um, for the SEPs, uh, I really want to say uh, the, what I saw is uh, the TIG is actually can calculate the simulate the trough with suboral data. And that is a necessary condition, but not a sufficient condition right. to do that. Then in that regard, we need to couple with the um, inner magnetosphere model with uh, either RCM or whatever. And also, we need to have a better description of close open view line. That that's reason is where. Uh, plasma pores occur with the boundary condition. It's very important, so we need to have all those reasons right to simulate the cells. And then clearly also we need to feed back to have something. So that's a big challenge. I'm looking for a great challenge of NASA or whatever to support yeah. this kind of research. Okay, yeah, that's a. How do you have that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the uh, simulations you did with shifting the phase of the storm yeah. and you perceive it. Yeah. yeah. And you were finding a strong uh, variation of how the electric field at, yeah. at the magnetic equator is yeah. responding. Did you, uh, did you have a feel for or did you uh, go in detail to examine uh, how much difference there uh, is coming from the coupling with the magnetosphere? That is how much is the um, High latitude convection responding uh, for these different cases, uh, as compared with how much of this difference might be associated with the, um, well, the magnetic field uh, yeah. differences. That is sort of a transmission <coughs> between the high latitudes and, and the equator. Yeah, I did a look at that. That's why uh, last last section of my paper, I just stop, stop there, so try to figure that out. Is that a question out? What we see is, uh, well, I preliminary look at is highlight, it looks uh, convection the same. However, the distance to the equator 
play big role. So the penetration in large fields, uh, is, uh, the shorter distance towards the equator or something to make it, uh, um, that's what I see, but I have still working on that part, trying to figure out what's exactly cause this uh, uh, penetration, difference in penetration in large field. So that is uh, still working in progress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I was curious that you're still um, the DE data and yeah. data is still relevant to these sort of uh, studies. And, yeah. And is cosmic our only uh, new, our instrumentation that, can, that, or planned instrumentation that allows us to probe this way? That's a good question. Actually, that's what we uh, complain to NASA a lot in the last 30 years. We don't have a well, time, they stay, but it's, uh, we don't have a reasonable. A measurement for the upper atmosphere. So now, but we do have a future mission in gold, and ICON, ICON do have a wind measurement, but it's a limited to low latitude, not a global. So we hope that uh, uh, can help. There's a windy measurement of US, <coughs> they were to 200 kilometers was out of the red light, but not much. So that's uh, the situation we face. That's why the neutral study, neutral dynamic study is so challenging because we don't have much data to really to constrain the model, to uh, to give us guide whether the model is wrong or bad or good. That's the, the things we need to. I hope we go there. Icon, and we also I uh, understand that's the, the cosmic one. Give indirect evidence of the neutral dynamics. So that's uh, I'm pretty much looking forward to the next uh, few years we go there. So. Can I make a comment? Yeah. In the interim, there is an ESA satellite. Go <laughs> today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cross from an accelerometer. Very sensitive accelerometer. Yeah. Gong just did a very nice uh, storm study uh, from the oh, yeah, yeah. 2010 April period uh, where she used uh, time GCM actually to, to do yeah. comparisons with Goche winds and uh, the model did quite a nice job. So th there is a, I absolutely agree with Wen Van, there's a dearth of, uh, of yeah, measurements, yeah. but yeah. There, there, we can rely on ESA. And yeah, yeah thank, thank you for mentioning that. Also yeah. with uh, a lot of people done with the CHEM. Right. We also have cost track wind, uh, you know, just the cost track right. wind, not a, not a wind vector, That's but right. a, clearly. In the ocean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have uh, ground based measurements. Oh, yeah, the FPI, I well, forgot about that, but uh, we do have a, a spotty. Positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah some, uh, some place. Uh, in Boulder, actually, Chia has that FPI. We do have that uh, investment. But uh, we do, uh, clearly also want a more global. Uh, Ground-based observation network is uh, that um, depends on itself. It's a risk for thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, I have a comment. Uh, you know, uh, talking about set and models. Uh, actually, we research that models based on comparison with the uh, observations from Palmer and the uh, Mr. Hill, uh, the chemistry and the comparison are very, very beautiful. So, uh, yeah. Results are uh, uh, not perfect, but uh, I would say, you know, there are some agreements, disagreements there, but uh, it's much more a better improvement than, than the, the yeah. standard uh, DIT stamp. So I was hoping that the can appropriate the SAPS to a standard version of it. Yeah, yeah so many things to do. It's a SAPS version. It's on my, in my, on my computer. Yeah, it's exactly. there, so you can use it. But uh, uh, I wish I could write more SAPS uh, simulation. And uh, he just published the paper that he's talking about. So use SAPS to improve the a comparison with model, yeah, it, uh, would, uh, it's open, it's there, so uh, I'd also help a little bit on that, so, but uh, anyway, it's there if you want, I want more tests and say, okay, it can be publicly released, that's it, uh, but it's there, so you can use it if you want, you can talk to, talk to me and uh, whatever, that's there, yeah. Um, we have a question? Yeah. Thank you.